Iran and Russia vow to expand defense cooperation. Bennett to travel to Russia next week to meet Putin with Iran on agenda. Mike Pompeo blasts Biden for making U.S. look weak citing Russia, China, Iran policies. Hi and welcome to In Focus, your guide in world of geopolitics. Chief of Staff of the Iranian Armed Forces Major General Mohammad Hossein Bakiri and Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shigu in a meeting in Moscow agreed to expand mutual cooperation in defense and military fields. During the meeting in the Russian capital on Tuesday, the top Iranian and Russian generals explored avenues for bolstering and reinvigorating mutual cooperation in the defense field. During the meeting the two sides discussed the big military agreement that is going to be signed soon. In a relevant development on Monday, General Bakiri announced that Iran-Russia Joint Military Commission will convene in three months from now. In a relevant development on Monday, General Bakiri said that he was following the implementation of contracts for purchasing defense equipment from Russia in his visit to Moscow. Prime Minister of Israel Naftali Bennett will travel to Russia next week for a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, his office said Tuesday. Bennett's office said the premier would take off for Sochi on Friday, October 22, adding that Putin extended the invitation. The two will discuss a series of diplomatic, security and economic issues involving both countries as well as important regional matters, primarily Iran's nuclear program. It will be Bennett's first meeting with the Russian leader since entering office. Both leaders spoke last Thursday, when Bennett congratulated Putin on his 69th birthday. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has slammed the current administration, arguing that its actions are showing American weakness to the nation's adversaries. In an interview with Fox News, Pompeo brought up the Biden administration's reaction to reports China tested a new hypersonic missile in August that surprised America. While the administration did not directly confirm the reports, it said that it welcomes stiff competition. In Pompeo's view, however this is not the way to respond to China. Uh, great to see you, Mr. Secretary. Well, it's 66 days now, Americans trapped behind enemy lines. Let's start with the China question first, then we'll go to Iran, then we'll go to Afghanistan. On China's clear uh, uh, political ambitions to reunify with Taiwan, Joe Biden is not lifting a finger. What should he be doing? What we did for four years, Sean, was make clear to the people of Taiwan that we'd be there to support them, to provide what they needed so they could defend themselves. And we made clear to the Chinese Communist Party that it was completely unacceptable if they took military action against uh, the island of Taiwan. Th those two basic facts were things President Trump was very clear he was prepared to defend. They could see that we did that el elsewhere in the world when we struck Qasem Soleimani, when we fired rockets into Syria, when they used chemical weapons crossing President Trump's red line. I think they all knew that we were serious about protecting Americans. I think they realized that uh, the debacle in Afghanistan, the fact the Iranians fired missiles from the Gaza Strip into Israel have all shown American weakness. And I see that of the four things you walked through tonight, um, those are all things where America is showing weakness. And when you do that, our adversaries will do everything they can to put us at risk and to crush us. Well, and I didn't even mention the Russia part. Now, let me go to the Iranian part. If, in fact, you marry this, this death to America, death to Israel, mantra or convert or die mantra of the Iranian mullahs and you empower them with nuclear weapons, which now the Biden administration is signaling, I guess they're going to be that they'll accept. Uh, what is the risk to the world at that point? Because to me, it seems very real because I imagine that the mullahs might be thinking they're doing God's will by firing that weapon at either Israel or the U.S. or another country. I can't believe they're going to permit this to happen. President Biden is on record multiple times saying he will never permit Iran to have a nuclear weapon. I saw what, what Robert Malley, the special envoy, began to signal. If you're the Israelis, you know that you can't live with an Iran with a nuclear weapon. I, I must say this, this puts them at real risk. It puts the whole world at risk that they'll proliferate these very nuclear weapons, right? It may not be the case that they'll fire them. They could distribute them. Iran is known for selling weapons all across the world. Uh, this is a very serious matter. We, we were determined, uh, we, we, we delivered putting the harshest sanctions on the Ayatollah and his henchmen uh, that Iran had ever seen. We had isolated them. We built up friendships with the Israelis. The Abraham Accords brought the Gulf states alongside of us. This is how you deter aggression. Allowing Iran to get a nuclear weapon puts our partner and friend Israel at risk. It puts the Gulf at risk. It creates risk for the United States of America as well.
Thanks for watching. If you want to stay up to date with top world events, subscribe to our YouTube channel.